Hey guys, PocketPixel here, bringing you a video on these little things. These are mini discs, and they were my obsession just a few years ago. In this video, I want to go ahead and look back at them and see what made them so special to me. So, the first question that you might be thinking is, what actually are mini discs? Well, they were a format introduced by Sony in 1992 to compete with Philips' regular cassettes as well as the DCC cassettes. Despite being discs, they were never meant to compete against CDs, and in fact they were meant to be used alongside CDs. What Sony wanted you to do is rip your CD onto your mini disc and then take your music wherever you went, all in a device that can easily fit in your pocket. Pretty brilliant! You were able to fit 74 minutes onto each mini disc, equivalent of a 650MB CD. 80 minute mini discs were available, equivalent of a 700MB CD. However, a 75 minute mini disc was only 160MB in size. Pretty impressive stuff. The way Sony managed to compress 700MB into 160 was with their 8-track compression algorithm. This system kept improving too, allowing for double or even quadruple the number of minutes, albeit with more compressed audio. As previously stated, one of the ways mini discs were meant to be used is in tangent with your stereo. Plug it in, hit record, boom, you have your music in the palm of your hand. But that's not all. You can also buy pre-recorded music, mostly only from Sony's own record labels. With rewritable mini discs, you could edit track order, edit titles, trim, erase songs and rewrite. We take all this stuff for granted nowadays, but considering CD rewritables didn't come out until 1997, this would have been one of the first times the public would be able to do such a thing. With regular CDRs, once you finalise it, you can't do anything with it. The way Sony was able to make the format rewritable was with a magnetic head. The laser would heat up the recording layer of the disc to demagnetize it, and then the magnet would magnetize it. With blank mini discs, the manufacturers had their own unique designs which gave the format a lot of personality. The format was also versatile. It was used in hi-fi decks, car stereos, and most commonly portable devices. Every mini disc device manufactured provided 6 seconds of anti-skip. Anyone who's the cheap Discman clone knows why it's a good decision that Sony made anti-skip mandatory on mini disc devices. This was my first mini disc device. It's a Sharp MD SR75, costing me a whopping £13. I picked this one up because it was both the cheapest working device on eBay and because I think it looks beautiful. Doesn't it just scream late 90s slash early 2000s? That's what I love about it. As you can see, it's not in a fantastic condition, but I think that gives it personality. My unit comes with a remote, which a lot of mini disc plays included. Having a remote is a pretty genius idea. You're able to see the song name and the track number and you're able to skip songs, change volume, playback mode and bass. Imagine if you were able to do that kind of stuff with your smartphone without having to pull it out of your pocket. The closest modern equivalent to a mini disc remote is a smartwatch, or one of those Apple inline controls. This recorder has a standard 8-track compression, which allows 75-80 minutes of music in stereo. Sharp has also given this device the ability to record in mono, which allows 150-160 minutes of music. As well as recording music, you can also record your voice via the microphone in. We can also see that this device has both line-in and optical-in, giving you versatility with transferring music. Okay, so I figured you guys want to see how you record onto a mini disc, and the process is pretty simple. You put your blank disc in, this is my brand new Fuji one, get your headphone jack and you plug it into both your mini disc, and you also do it onto your other device, so for example, my laptop. As you can see, it says blank MD, we just hit record, it locks the device so you cannot open it, and now we have a few options. Here we can change it from stereo to mono. We can also change the recording level as this does not have automatic level adjustment as far as I'm aware. And now what you want to do is just play your track and you want to see if the level is correct. You want it to be at zero, you don't want it to be over. Then what you do is you line up your track back to zero and then you hit sync. Sync is a very useful feature which I recommend using um, on this device. As you can say, see it says line sync. And then when we hit space, sync start. So the sync feature, what it does is when there's a few seconds of silence, I believe three seconds, it will change the track number to the next one. So what I'm gonna do now is pause my music. And it says stand by. And now as you can see, the track number progressed to two. And if I was to play my music again, sync start. What we can do now is we can edit it. We can change the disc name, combine tracks, erase tracks, move tracks, change the track name, and old erase and name stamp. So let's say I want to change the track name. We have to do it through this really annoying thing. So as you can see, it's an ABC layout and you just pick out each letter. If you have a very long track name, it's just a complete and utter pain. That's basically all you need to know how to operate a mini disc device. The reason I've stopped you in this one is because its skip protection is pretty useless. If the device is in your jeans pocket, it's Guaranteed stop reading your music. You have to put in a jacket pocket or a bag, basically something that doesn't move around as much. 
Also, the device choose for batteries, especially while recording. Finally, I want to be able to transfer my music through USB. This is where my second device comes into play. This is a Sony MZN510. Despite coming out in 2003 and only being free as newer than Sharp, it has a bunch of extra features. This device features 8-track free, allowing 150-160 minutes of music in stereo in LP2 and 300-320 minutes of music in LP4. It has a Type-S DSP chip which allows for better encoding in standard play and better decoding of long play for slightly better audio quality. The device has USB music transfer, better sync recording only requiring a second of silence unlike the Sharp, automatic line level adjustment, music grouping, bass and treble adjustment instead of only bass like on the Sharp, quick start mode where the device turns on instantaneously for up to an hour, automatic volume leveling, massive 48 hours of playtime in LP2, and insane G-Shock anti-skip. I accidentally dropped this thing twice and it just kept playing due to its long buffer. I would love to go into more detail about these features, however this would make the video too long, but I'll leave that for a future video. Let me tell you this though, listening to music on this device is pretty fun. The audio quality despite being heavily compressed is perfectly passable. When turning up the treble you can get some pretty clear sound, which you definitely can't with a sharp. The audio quality at LP2 sounds pretty much as good as the smartphone on Bluetooth would, depending on your Bluetooth codec of course. If you don't have a trained audiophile ear, the audio output from this little guy will definitely please you. And because of its extra long battery life, it will outlast your smartphone too despite having moving parts. USB transfer by Sony's proprietary software allows you to copy music faster than if you had to do it real time via line out, which is useful if you have multiple albums you need to record. And all that hassle of renaming tracks letter by letter like on the Sharp can be done within software which saves so much time. And all 8 track free devices have grouping, which allows you to place tracks in folders for when you have multiple albums or multiple mixtapes. The only thing that this device is missing is the microphone recording, as this is a Walkman and not a recorder. However, like I said in the beginning of the video, this was my obsession. Nowadays I just find it more convenient to stream my music from Spotify. I don't really have many mp3 files anymore, because why would I? I could copy some music from Spotify, which is probably illegal, I have no idea since Spotify postdates home taping. Anyway, copying from Spotify is just a hassle, I have to wait like an hour for my music to be copied over since it's real time, and if I'm copying from my laptop it means I can't really do anything else whilst it's copying, in case I screw up the recording. I'm now left with all these discs and no motivation to play them. The albums I recorded onto it I don't really want to listen to, and my mix tapes are on Spotify. So what is the point, especially now since the albums I really like are buy on vinyl anyway. So that's my conclusion to the mini disc. It was fun whilst it lasted, but I just can't bother with it nowadays. But what did the public think about the mini disc whilst it was still commercially sold? Well, the internet might make you believe that it was a failure, but in the UK and possibly some other parts of Europe, it wasn't. It definitely wasn't as popular as CDs and cassettes were, but the fact I managed to score all these players and the discs for cheap and even bought some new ones at uni shows that the format was relatively popular. It was the most popular in Japan, where Sony still creates mini discs to this day and stopped producing the last mini disc device in 2013, 21 years after the format was created. That certainly doesn't sound like failure to me. I like the idea that Sony had with this, but by the time mini discs picked up pace in the late 90s, MP3 devices were being created, but they couldn't hold anywhere near as many songs as these guys could, and they had worse battery life too despite being solid state. But of course, later on, the MP3 players improved and iPods became huge. The mini disc format was brilliant, but it's just a shame that I didn't get the popularity it deserved. Anyway, thank you for watching this video. If you'd like to see more content, please hit subscribe and see my other videos.